New tier list season. Now with the release of Charlie and for everyone's account just growing and progressing throughout the couple of months, people are finally able to clear a lot of the hard content even in top adversity, which means we have a more settled in meta. And Privilege here has just updated their tier list and I think this is quite accurate. Speaking of which, with the new Charlie coming in, I'm wondering how good is she performing for the general public, right? And without further ado, let's get into today's yacht fest. This is Privilege's tier list for now and it's separated in three categories throughout DPS, hybrid, and support. Now the first disclaimer about any tier list that we have, most characters in the game are skill based so the better you play them the better they get in like a tier list so i think it's better to look at this list and think this is an ease of use list the higher they are the easier it is to use for the maximum value case in point with the first one on the dps list we got tier zero in jinsi now under the icon it says cleave and coordinated attacks cleave basically means it's mid-range attack not quite so airy not quite so single target jinsi being the top dps whereas from before we had gn alongside her and we can see that gn has dropped to tier with 0.5. And not only that, we're dropped with another bombshell of Chang Li, the person everyone fell in love with, is surprisingly tier 0.5. Now, in a lot of gacha games like these, characters that get released tend to always be like the best character of that version. So I'm pretty surprised to see Chang Li starting at tier 0.5. So to first take a look at Jin Si versus these two characters in tier 0.5, the reason why Jin Si is pulling apart compared to those two, according to Pritwin at least, is apparently just the high damage number one. And secondly, is Jin Si's team's ability, including herself, that helps to not only deal a lot of damage and survive as well. Here's what that means, right? So one of the best Jinsi teams we have, you know, Yuan, Wu, Verena, and Jinsi, that team does so much damage that you can match any GN team even. At the same time, you just have a lot of protections as well. You got Yuan, Wu, your Verena to heal, making Jinsi not only strong, but extremely easy to use, which is why I think tier lists like these and whatever ways is more like the ease of use. The easier someone is to use, you will likely see them in high tier. That's why Jinsi's up there. Compared to someone like GN, it's a bit harder to play him. You need to actually evade. There's going to be some animation canceling, especially with your X. Go. During your ultimate, you have to stand on thing for 10 seconds. You need to plaster your face on the boss. And if you don't hit the boss, you're like just missing DPS. And honestly, that is probably why Chan Li is also in tier 0.5. Damage wise alone, she's already not out damaging someone like Jinsi based on the pure fact that Chan Li has lower multipliers. On top of that, Chan Li is actually pretty hard to use. Well, if you want to just use it the easy way without, you know, min maxing your movements, your animations, it is not hard to use. Like compared to someone like Jinsi, which is just high damage and easy to use as heck, all you gotta do is really spam a couple of buttons. Comparatively, Chang Li simply isn't a character like that. Chang Li certainly takes some skill to use. And not to mention, if you want to get to the premier level of Chang Li gameplay, you have to animation cancel, switch cancel, you have to do a lot of those things. And even then, she wouldn't outpace a Jin C T. So at this point, you're probably disliking the video and think, yo, this guy just hates Chang Li. Listen, I'm infatuated with Chang Li, okay? Don't get me wrong now. So let's try and understand this deeper though. Is Chang Li just, you know, worse than Jin C? I'm going to straight up say from what we've seen, from what the tier list has suggests as well. I think most people would agree. Yes, Chang Li as a main DPS is simply harder to use currently than Jin Si, which you can say she's worse than Jin Si currently. But here's the thing about Chang Li that I think a lot of people would forget about. Chang Li's outro skill is seemingly a Yin Lin type of skill. Back in the day when Yin Lin came out, we we're all like just losing our minds because it's nearly a perfect supportive ability for someone like Kao Chara. That means for Chang Li's case, the moment someone that would utilize her buff well appear, that character is going to go insane, especially an only paired with someone like Chang Li. So at the current moment, yeah, there's just not any perfect allies for Chang Li that can utilize each of their kits perfectly. Hence why she's ranked tier 0.5, which may come as a shock to a lot of people that think, oh, Chang Li's a wife, she must be top tier. After referring to a lot of sources, including from the CN side, people do agree that if you have pulled for Jin Si, you don't necessarily have to pull Chang Li at all. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I personally think this is a really hard situation. In the future, they might release a really good fusion character. They'll pair perfectly with Chang Li and make her just top tier again. So Kuro Games have given us the scenario where currently she just has this hole in her gameplay where you want to stand on field with her and then your allies has to be another main DPS that stands on field as well, yet no one can perfectly utilize her buff. So the value in investing in Chan Li doesn't seem too obvious. Nobody knows if Kuro Games is going to release a character that's really suitable for Chan Li ever. And even if they do, God knows when that'll happen, right? So we have this really weird scenario with Chan Li actually that is like just one step away. Once bro's just edging us, right? Now, jokes aside though, I think this tier is fair. Let me know what you think. You can disagree, but don't diss my family, yeah? So that was one of the big changes for the top tiers of Wuthering Ways, tier 0 and tier 0 0.5. You see the split in main DPS here. For hybrid and support, the top two tiers are still the same, but you know what? I totally agree. Verena's still top tier. If anything, I think Verena's too good. They need more variety than just Verena, man. Every team needs a Verena. Yin Lin's still top, top tier as a hybrid. And at sequence 2, we have San Hua and Mortefi, both have 0 0.5. I think that's pretty agreeable just because there's no other characters in the game. 
game that can really just replace or outshine them. So this is a fair tier, in my opinion. And moving on to tier one, we got some news here. Encore has been lowered along with Havoc Rover as well. And on the support side of things, we have Tian Sid that got lowered. Now look at Encore and Havoc Rover. Compared to Charlie and Gien, Encore is nearly just as hard, if not harder to use compared to, say, someone like Charlie. Because, you know, under the icon, you see cancel here, which means you need animation canceling, you need switch canceling, a lot of things to make Encore do high damage. So for a tier list, that probably just means the ease of use versus the value you get in terms of damage. Encore is certainly someone that has a high skill ceiling for a very good return. But is she at the same level as someone like GN though? I certainly don't think so. That's why I do agree. Putting her at tier one is rather fair. As for Havoc Rover, compared to Charlie and GN again, is Havoc Rover better? Now, in terms of damage output, I'm pretty certain Havoc Rover doesn't, you know, defeat the tier 0 0.5. And it's probably for that reason that they are in tier one. One good five star support for the Havoc element, then Havoc Rover will instantly go back to tier 0 0.5, in my opinion. But yeah, for now though, tier one seems fair to me. And moving on, we I can win a hybrid for tier one. He was already here for the last version in Jin C's patch. And God, I knew I had to trust the Fedora. I was the first Yuan Wu believer, man. As for Dian Xin, though, I'm gonna be absolutely honest. Even at the start of the game, I didn't think Dian Xin was someone that's insane. But there are actually a lot of different opinions about her that says you might even rank even higher than what she is now. I personally think this is actually fair for Dian Xin. And here is the reason why. In all of the end game that we have right now, there are pretty much no mode that we need to gather enemies with. And that's the one thing Dian Xin does with her ulti. Yeah, her outro skill is really good. You get a lot of alt damage increase. No one's going to complain at that. But the fact is her resonance liberation has a whole gather mechanic. Doesn't do as much damage. You find it pretty pointless to use it against a boss because, well, you ain't gathering one boss. And damage output wise, she's not bad, but not crazy either, right? The one extra thing that she has for her is the ability to heal. But for that, I think Jensen in tier 1 is very fair. And moving on next with some controversy here, we got Cal Charo in tier 1.5. This was pretty surprising to me. And from what I've read in the um, Primo website, Cal Charo is mainly ranked here because he needs an insanely high, almost impossible skill ceiling in order to be one of the top DPSs. I use the best team for him, right? I got Cal Charo, Yin Liv Arena. The problem with that team is there's a lot of canceling you have to do, especially if you're LT. However, in endgame tower adversity or just endgame in general, usually you are fighting one big boss and that boss is going to fly around. They're going to jump around. They're going to attack you. In order to maximize Kao Charles' damage and making him one of the best DPS in the game, you have to basically do like three death messengers during the 10 second ulti, which I'm saying if you miss one cancel, you might just miss one death messenger and boom, you have way less damage. And for that reason, Kao Charles ranked tier 1.5. That is what Pritwin has said, but I personally still think he deserves to be tier 1. Being hard to use, but having an extreme high ceiling is, well, it's kind of similar to Encore, though I think Encore is easier compared to Kao Charo to use, but it's pretty similar, right? It's 10 second ulti, during of which you have to land all your hits, or else your damage goes down. So, uh, me personally, I would have him stay at tier 1. I wouldn't dare say he would be the same rank as Don Jin, yeah? Speaking of which, we have Don Jin, which got lowered down, and I personally think this is fair. Everyone above her right now in the DPS class, Don Jin does not outshine. On top of that, you would think, you know, Kao Charo is hard to use, Don Jin's even harder. Get hit once, you might just pop and die. So, for a newbie tier 1.5, I think it's fair, and so Surprisingly, only two of these characters are in this entire tier. But let's take a look at what else do we have, though. We have Chisya and Lingya. Now, the thing about four stars is they're assumed at sequence two in print one, yeah? So I get that, you know what? Chisya at S2. Certainly not as good. I'm pretty sure I've done a lot of sequence that gives you max charges of forte when you use her ulti. That's what makes her good. So without that, yeah, tier two, that's fair. And as for Lingyang, okay, this I am so surprised of. Now, I don't mean Lingyang. I've tried to play with him. Didn't think he was that bad. But it's not that his position got changed. He was just there, tier 2 for effort. I'm actually shocked. Jesus, is he that bad? I know that he's very janky to use doing her forte mode, where, you know, he jumps on air, steps on the, you know, pillars. The targeting is pretty messed up with him as well. And the fact is that outside of the lion dance state, his damage output is really not high. But is he tier 2 bad, though? As bad as a non-fully sequenced Chisya? I'm pretty sure that I'll personally put him at tier 1.5, along with Dungeon. Both rather hard to use, and they don't do the most damage either. Tier 2 for me is a bit of an overkill, though. But moving on, we have the hybrid of the support. We got Alto and Spectral Rover. Now, I'm gonna just be straight up. I've only used Alto a little bit, and I can actually say he shares a bit of a similarity to Chang Li. So, Alto has a lot of damage output on him, yeah? But not enough to make him just an arrow DPS. But then he has an outro skill that boosts arrow damage too, which makes the perfect ally would be someone like GF. However, because Alto has a kit that has his missed up that is supposed to stand on field for a little bit to get his kit out, and the damage output as well, makes everyone prefer just more Teffy instead, because you just stand on field for like two seconds 
seconds get out to GX. And especially at low sequence, Alto is simply not that strong yet. The taunt with the mist is good. Therefore, for him to be tier two, I feel like it's fair, especially for only sequence two. But with higher sequence though, I bet he can do better. And as for Spectral Rover, to be told nobody's using Spectral Rover because while have a Rover is just good, yeah? And Spectral Rover is just the jack of all trades, master of none. They have a bit of a heal. They have a bit of supportive capabilities with time slow. And in a game like Water Ways, you would rather have a team that each do something good. So when it's their turn to do their job, they're gonna do it well. Someone like San Juan that just drops in, gets out. Spectral Rover is like a balanced character that can do it all. Like you would never do more damage than a team that utilizes specialists in each role and just dunk you with all of their best abilities. So tier two for Spectral Rover, fair enough. I don't think anyone keeps them at Spectral anyways, always Havoc. But moving on though, we have the support slot. We've got tier two Yang Yang. Now at sequence two, certainly I think she's not that great, but at max sequence though, her damage output actually goes up a lot. She share the same issue as someone like Tian Xin, yeah? The LT gathers enemies, but well, if the enemy's a boss, then you kind of have a dead slot there. You don't really do anything with the LT except some damage. The ultra skill of Yang Yang helps you regenerate energy, which is actually a good thing, yeah? But most of the time, you would rather just use a support that gives you extra damage. And the best case for it, which I've done a video on before, is using her to solo the easier mob stage in Tower University. As a four-star character, she's cheaper to build as well, which makes her the prime candidate to put some of your gear on and just get rid of the easy stages on Tower University so you save your vigor. But at sequence two, though, I don't think she's strong enough to be higher, so this seems fair to me. And sadly, they even have a last tier for just Tao Chi. They dedicated an entire tier for her. Now, the main reason both people would rank her low. Well, firstly, at sequence two, for sure, right? She's definitely weaker. The main reason is that most people play her as like the San Hua type of sub DPS slash buffer. You want that resident skill damage increase from her outro, yeah? And to trigger that, you have to get your Concerto up quickly. That is something Tauchi doesn't quite do well. Don't get me wrong, she can get max Concerto in due time, but the fact that her slashes are a bit slower, the fact that you need to get hit sometimes in order to land some counters with your E to get more Concerto, that means she'll stay on field a bit longer than a lot of other supports. In exchange though, you do get a shield, and that shield is pretty thick, it'll, it'll protect you quite well. But the problem is the current meta does not value shields as much. The most valuable thing is just killing the enemy before they kill you. That's the style that's most effective that most people play. Considering in Tower University, you are timed as well. It's always better to aim for killing the enemy first before thinking about, oh, I'll tank them with a shield. And hence why Tao Chi is ranked this low. But I personally think, come on, tier three. I don't think there's a need to have a whole other tier for one character dedicated for that tier. I feel like putting her at tier two says enough, yeah? Like if I ask myself, Yang Yang's better than Tao Chi or is Tao Chi's better than Yang Yang? I think they're both just about the same. No one really utilized both of them that much anyway. But yeah, calling her a tier three for one extra row is kind of brutal to me, I don't know. It is understandable though, her shield mechanic simply isn't valid too much yet. But you never know what happens in the future, right? If it gets so hard that the damage output is so high, maybe the shield will see some play. And at max sequence, her damage output actually increases by quite a bit. But for now though, at sequence two, which is what they have um, ranked this tier list with, definitely not an insane character to me. And ladies and gentlemen, that is all for the updated tier list from Pritwin. Remember they've done their due research for this list to be made, and they're human as well, right? If you disagree, you can, you know, just don't hurl insults for fun. And as for me, I'm just sharing my opinion as well based on what I've played. I've built most of the characters in the game. Feel free to disagree, but please keep it civil. And that is all for today. Let me know what you think and take care.